wanted to know which planet was causing your suffering? Hmm... How about Earth? Hey everyone, Brandflex here, back with another Eternal Return video. For today's video, I'm going to be trying to define the classes within the game, as well as sort the characters into them, in order to help you guys create a general guideline for the compositions you can create, as well as how you can approach each character when you're playing them within the game. So obviously, the sorting and classification does involve a lot of personal bias, so if you disagree with any of them, please let me know, I'm always happy to discuss. I have ran through a few of these with other people in the community, but obviously, some people is not everybody, and I'm always happy to get another opinion on the matter. So before I really get started into this list, I just want to show you guys the categorizations I have, just so I can talk about the classes later on. We have the Vanguard, Juggernaut, Bruiser, Assassin, Burst, DPS, and Specialist classes, and I just want to spoil that again because I will be talking about where I think they'll be placed during their sections, so this will save me a bit more awkwardness going into the video. I've also created a spectrum within the classes to kind of prove how diverse these characters can be. So you'll see these two kind of labels. They aren't perfect by any means, but hopefully it'll help you guys understand why I put certain characters where, and also gives me an excuse to explain the reason why I define them as certain classes. With that said, let's just jump right into it. The Vanguard class is going to be four characters only. These are all melees that have very good defensive stats as well as a lot of utility in their kits. I've gone ahead and separated them by their utility versus their mobility just because it really does affect how you're allowed to play these characters. For example, Lennox has two very good damage abilities and two very good crowd control abilities, but in exchange, she doesn't really have a way to run away besides right-clicking. Mai has two dashes attached to her E, where she can either run away with them or dash and taunt enemies. And then she also has very good utility because obviously her W negates all auto attack damage, and her ultimate does the same thing for herself and Yoink's allies back to her if they are out of position. Estelle and Elena both have very long distance abilities on both their E's ironically enough, and because of that, they're able to run and engage from very far distances comparatively to Lennox and Mai. Now, all four of these characters have good damage, so not necessarily lacking with them. Just be aware that they're not meant to solo carries or solo entire team fight by themselves if they are left alone with another tank or carry. Despite that, they are going to be very flexible in any type of composition. I think the only thing you should take note of is if they're with another Vanguard or with a Juggernaut, then you will need to be paired with a Burst or DPS character, or else you'll just lack damage. Which is fine, but you might miss out on some kills here and there that you would have otherwise gotten if you had a bit more damage on your team. So moving on to the next set of quote-unquote tank characters, we have the Juggernauts. These are characters that have very high durability, whether that's through pure stats or healing, as well as some pretty good damage. An important thing to note with Eternal Return Juggernauts is that every melee in this game has really good mobility besides Lennox, which is pretty important to point out because Juggernauts traditionally have no mobility, whereas all the ones I have in this list will have some pretty good mobility. So starting with Eleven, she is kind of the ugly duckling in this group, her damage is a good amount lower than the other three characters, but her durability is so high that I feel like it is kind of a misnomer to put her into Vanguard, especially since comparatively she only has her W for utility and everything else is a mobility or healing or damage spell, which contrasts pretty heavily with the Vanguard class who has a lot more utility on more than one ability. Magnus is another character that is a little bit more odd because instead of getting insane amounts of healing, he mostly just gets more and more durable as time goes on thanks to his passive, but he still does some pretty good damage and he's still very hard to kill. Again, on Marcus, lean much more towards the drain tank playstyle, where they will heal based on the damage they deal, but because they build a lot of armor naturally, they do end up being much bigger HP balls than a lot of their counterparts in the bruiser category. The Juggernauts will pretty much share the exact same composition suggestions as the Vanguards do, which was slot in anywhere unless you're with another Vanguard or Juggernaut, in which case hopefully another player is playing a DPS or Burst character, but you also have to make the conscious effort to peel back for your actual damage dealers, if only because it's very hard to resist the urge to dive into the enemy team as opposed to peel back for your team. You do still have some peel and you are a very big beef ball, so helping your actual damage dealer out will often be very much appreciated. The Bruiser class is pretty diverse and honestly ends up including a lot of characters that would otherwise be defined as melee carries in many different games. These characters can technically solo frontline, but you often will have to dip into those tank items to do so, and you won't be able to play as divey as you usually would be able to if you're playing with another frontliner. So to get these two out of the way, you might notice that there's Vanya and Tazia in the Bruiser category. The reason why I have them here as opposed to the other categories is because they are very naturally tanky due to their kit. They both get an insane amount of shields generated from their skills, which makes them deceptively tanky, especially if you are a melee playing into them. 
these two characters would belong to the carry side of the scale, but also you can see that there's also more supporty bruisers on the other side, so characters like Leon, Shokai, and kind of Nikki are pretty good at doing damage, but they do have another aspect of the kit that kind of takes them away from being a pure carry bruiser to being a bit more supportive in nature. In terms of composition, I think you just don't want to be the only frontliner in your team. Obviously, as mentioned earlier, you can adjust your build to do so, but honestly, besides that small note, bruisers are really the most flexible role in the game. I think it's really just the numbers they have that determine how good they feel to play with, just because they do tend to round out compositions pretty flexibly, it's just mostly whether or not they deal enough or tank enough in the end. The assassin class are a group of characters that are encouraged to dump their kit as quickly as possible in an attempt to assassinate or deal a bunch of damage to a group of enemies. These characters really, really do not want to be the solo frontliner of their team, just because being the solo frontliner makes it really easy for the enemy to be very aware of where you are, which ends up making it that much harder for you to find flank angles or even just get the jump on a good target. You can kind of circumvent that issue by playing certain characters, aka Tank Heart, but in the end, if you are an assassin player, I would personally recommend swapping off the assassin if you do have that two backliner setup, but if you're very confident and you're very comfortable with your character, then by all means please do it. Just be aware that by nature of a team game, you might get a bit more flack if your team ends up doing poorly. Bianca is pretty intentionally in this class, especially since they removed her ground effect from her ultimate. She doesn't have that much utility outside of the root on her Q, which means that combined with her melee range, for me personally, she feels more like an assassin than a burst mage. If we're being honest, the burst class and the assassin class could be pretty much connected together. The difference is mainly going to be the fact that the burst class is going to be a bit longer ranged and or have a bit more utility, and that difference was just barely good enough of a reason for me to want to make a different class for them altogether. The main thing here is that these characters obviously cannot tank at all. These are not frontline characters by any means, they don't have the base stats for it, they don't have the excuse to build tank stats to be that frontliner, so you will have to have a frontliner, or you'll have to be a triple ranged team, which is possible, but does require you to play a lot better than you usually would because you don't have that buffer in between you and the incoming enemy team. As long as there is a frontliner though, you are in pretty good hands. Obviously you pair very well with the assassin people because you add to their burst, and bruisers will always appreciate having a lot less HP to grind through when they're trying to kill a tank or an enemy squishy that is in their hands. The DPS class is going to be pretty straightforward. These are all characters that deal consistent damage over time. Their main distinction is going to be whether or not they have a button that just massively inflates their DPS. So for example, the AR characters have Overheat, which is their weapon skill, that makes them do a lot more damage for a brief moment in time. Same thing with William on his Q, when you stack up 3 balls, his auto attacks basically double and slam really hard, and Heart obviously has her W which increases her attack range and her flat AD, which is really impactful when you're trying to burst somebody down very quickly. Obviously these characters are auto attackers, which means that they still do a lot of damage over time without those buffs active, but it's just good to be aware of that because if you don't use that window well, you'll find yourself losing a lot more fights that you should win, and also not getting kills that you should have tagged. In my opinion, the only two mages that kind of belong in this DPS slot are going to be Ava and Hayes, not only because their generic abilities are very low cooldown and they can really poke people out for a long time, but they also have some pretty good bursts to finish out fights, which is something that a lot of mages don't seem to have these days. You can pretty much play these characters as long as you have a frontliner of any sorts. Obviously, the more utility your frontliner has, the easier your life will be, but if you're playing with assassins, you might find yourself struggling a little bit just because they will often abandon you in order to chase their own kills. So just be aware of that. If you have an assassin or a very dive-centric bruiser on your team, play a bit safer because you will be trading places with their backliners and other people will be diving you in return for their backline. The final class of characters that I want to review are going to be the Flexors. This name is pretty tentative, I've been playing around with secondaries or specialists, but regardless, the reason why these characters are in their separate class is because they simply lack the damage to be your sole carry. What they lack in damage is generally made up for utility, but unfortunately utility isn't that relevant if you don't have the damage to back it up. So essentially, these characters do slot into almost everything pretty flexibly, but if you are running with a 2 Vanguard or 2 Juggernaut or a combination of the 2 composition, you probably want to avoid playing these characters with the sole exception of Adina, 
who is overtuned to the point where she probably can still function just fine because she can rotate so often in a fight that lasts as long as they would with two tank characters. Thankfully, getting a team with two random tank players is pretty rare because a lot of people would love to play those other carry-centric characters, so I wouldn't worry too much, it's just more of a warning if you do happen to run into these players. A lot of these characters are very one-tricked, just because they are a bit more complex than your average character, so they're unlikely to swap off. So if you're playing the Vanguard or the Juggernaut, just maybe keep a Bruiser in your back pocket just so you can flex into these players a bit more better. I want to reiterate that these characters aren't terrible if they're your primary carry, it's just that you'll notice a lot of fights will end up with the enemy team barely managing to run away, purely because you can't finish them off unless you get a incredible engage of some sort. That will about wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I spent a lot of time trying to plan it out and hopefully it was educational. Again, please feel free to leave comments about where I place these characters. I am happy to talk about them. And I'm also happy to expand upon these lists and ideas if you guys want to, I just need to know. So I hope you guys have a good night or day wherever you are and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.